Are you curious about deploying your own static website? I'll show you how to do it using Terraform, Azure Static Web Apps, GitHub, and Hugo. What's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter for now. <laughs> And welcome to Terraform Tuesday. Today, we're talking about building your own static website with Hugo, deploying it with GitHub Actions, and building out the infrastructure using Terraform and Azure Static Web Apps. Before we get into the meat of the content, I just want to mention that Pluralsight's Cloud Happy promotion is currently going on through the rest of the year. What is this crazy promotion? Well, basically, if you're interested in achieving a cloud certification, something like Certified Kubernetes Administrator or Terraform Associate. They are offering free access to courses on Pluralsight, and all you have to do is go to the page and sign up. The link is down in the description. It's free, and you can take one of my courses if you'd like. That's pretty awesome. Anyway, let's get to the main topic. So the point of today's video is helping you deploy a static website. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, a static website is really nice because it's basically HTML and some JavaScript, which means you can deploy it just about anywhere. That makes it very portable. It also means that you own the content, not some third party provider or platform. And that's usually a good thing. It's nice to own your own domain and the content that lives on it. Now, why are we choosing something like Azure Static Web Apps? Well, because it's free and it's pretty fast. So let's dig into what technologies we're actually using and what the process looks like. To build the static website, we're using an application called Hugo. And if you're not familiar with Hugo, it basically takes a set of markdown files and some theme files and renders a static website based off of those files. And then that static website is published somewhere that can host a website, which is, I mean, a lot of different places, right? You've got a lot of choices here. Now, the one that I chose to go with is Azure Static Web Apps, and that's partly because I'm currently hosting my podcast Chaos Lever, and it's a really good experience, and so far I haven't had to pay a dime in hosting fees, which is kind of nice. Azure Static Web Apps also has Hugo rendering built in, so you don't actually have to give it the pre-rendered site. You just have to give it a repository with those site files, and it will use Hugo to render it for you. That's pretty convenient. Now, what are we actually using to do that rendering? We're using GitHub Actions to hook into Azure Static Web Apps, submit those website files to it, and then have it do the rendering. And that's gonna live in a GitHub repository that we'll see later. And how are we building out our Azure infrastructure to do all of that? Well, you probably can guess we're gonna use Terraform to lay down the foundation. So let's get into what we're actually deploying using Terraform. Here in VS Code, I have a copy of the GitHub repository copied down, and we have a directory called infrastructure that has our Terraform files in it. I'll go ahead and expand out infrastructure here, and we'll take a look in the main.tf to see what all is included in our configuration. Well, to start with, we're creating an Azure resource group, which we kind of have to do to hold you know, resources. And then we'll create an Azure static site. And then with that static site, we're going to add a custom domain. Now, Azure will automatically generate a host name for that website, but it's not gonna be super friendly and you probably wanna use your own, a domain that you own perhaps. So we're going to add a custom domain to do that. Now, Azure Static Web Apps is not just gonna assume you own that domain, it does want you to validate that fact. And so what we're going to do is create an Azure DNS zone for that domain name we want to use. And inside of that zone, we're gonna create two records. One is a TXT record that will validate ownership. So Azure Static Web Apps will give us a validation string and we'll create the text record with that validation string. And then it will check to make sure that string is there. And once you do that, now you can use that domain name. And then we'll create a second record, an alias record, using that domain name, whether it's blog.example.com or whatever, and we're going to point that to the ID of our Azure Static Web App, which will render back to the website where our content is hosted. And that's pretty much it. That's everything that's in the configuration. Now, before we deploy that configuration, let's talk about what you need upfront before you attempt the deployment. 
in order to follow along, you're gonna need a few different things. You're gonna need an Azure subscription, which I feel like should be fairly obvious, right? You're gonna to want to register a domain with a domain registrar, and this should be a new domain, not an existing one. If you have an existing domain that's hosted and has a bunch of records, we're not gonna use that. This is gonna be net new. So pick up a cheap domain. You can usually get one for like $2 for the first year. And if you wanna swap it out later, you can do that. And you also need a GitHub account where you will fork the repository that we're going to be using. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is fork that repository. Let's jump over to GitHub and I'll show you the repository. Okay, this is the GitHub repository that I was referencing. It's called Azure SWA Hugo Blog. The link is down below. And the first thing you're going to want to do is fork this repository to your GitHub account, because that's where you're going to be managing the website from. And then you can clone this repository down locally so that you could work in it with your code editor of choice. And the first thing we're going to do is deploy the infrastructure using Terraform. Let's get that started now. All right, back in Visual Studio Code, let's get ready to deploy our infrastructure. Before we do that, we need to set some variable values, and I've done that through a terraform.tf vars file. So in here, I have the region, which is set to central US. Now there's a limited number of regions that run Azure Static Web Apps right now, so I've put a conditional constraint on this variable to only let you use the regions that are supported. The website name is going to be the actual address that you want to be able to plug into your browser to go to the website. So I'm calling this one blog.10bitpodcast.com. And then the custom domain name will be the custom domain that you're using, the one that you've registered somewhere. In this case, it's 10bitpodcast.com. Now an Apex domain for the website name is supported, but in this case, I'm going with blog.10bitpodcast.com. Now, let me go ahead and get Terraform initialized. So I'm gonna go into the infrastructure directory and we're going to run Terraform in it. And I'm using a remote backend. I'm using the Azure storage backend. If you wanna set that up yourself, that's in the readme document here. So I can update my infrastructure as needed as things potentially change. If you don't wanna use the remote backend, you can change the contents of the terraform.tf file to not use a remote backend and just use the local backend. That's up to you. All right, now that I've successfully initialized Terraform, the last thing to do is to run a Terraform apply auto approve. That's gonna go out and create those resources and I'll go ahead and scooch ahead until those resources have been created. Okay, the deployment has completed successfully and I got some very useful outputs out of here. I got the name servers that are going to be used by the zone that was created in Azure DNS. And I'm going to need to update the registrar for my domain with these custom name servers. The other piece is the API token and we'll use that with our GitHub actions. First, let's update our name servers. So I'm gonna take note here, it's NS1-05 for the first one, then NS2, NS3, NS4. It follows a pretty predictable pattern with the end being .com, .net, .org, .info. Let's jump over to my registrar to update these settings. The 10-bit podcast domain happens to be registered with Namecheap for me. So I have gone into the control panel on Namecheap for this domain and I'm updating the name servers. Now, last time I did this, I got NS1 one dash oh nine. Now it's oh five. So all I really have to do is update these each to be oh five, which is, you know, pretty straightforward. If you're doing this for the very first time, you can copy and paste what you see in the outputs and use that. Now this can take a little bit to take effect. So it's not going to be absolutely instantaneous. 48 hours is probably a push. You're probably looking at more, maybe like 30 minutes. Now, how do we know if this has taken effect? Remember, we are verifying ownership of this domain through our Azure Static Web Apps and a text record that was added to our DNS zone. So if we go to Azure, and let me refresh the view so I can get the group that actually is being used here, blog 10-bit podcast. There we go. In this resource group, I should have my Azure Static Web App and in here, there's going to be a section called custom domains. So let me click on that. 
And here are the domains that are being used. You can see one is the one that Azure generated for me, and that's already validated, auto-generated. The other one is the custom domain, and that's in a validating status. And if I click on view details, it shows me the value that should be in my text record. Now, Terraform already created this record for me. The only piece that's missing is because I just updated the name servers, it's gonna take a minute for that change to be understood and then for it to actually validate the domain. So I'm gonna pause for a second and we'll come back when the domain has been successfully validated. All right, it took about 10 minutes for things to update, but eventually it did come back as validated. So now we're ready to move on to the next step, which is deploying our site using GitHub Actions. So let's jump over to the GitHub repository to review that process. Okay, this is the GitHub repository that we are using. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you should have forked this into your own account. And in here, let's first check out the website itself. And that is stored helpfully in the website directory. Look out everybody, I'm getting kooky and crazy. Now, if you haven't used Hugo before, this is not the time for me to explain everything about Hugo. All you really need to know is that content is going to be stored in content slash posts usually, and the themes are usually stored in uh, themes. And in this case, we're using the Anantke theme. So that is what's set up by default. You can switch out the theme to use whatever you would like, but in this case, I went with the default theme that gets loaded when you go through the Hugo Quick Start. That is also linked in the readme if you need to brush up on how Hugo works a little bit. The main thing to know is that the contents for the website is stored in the website directory. Now let's take a look at the GitHub Actions. If we go into Workflows and into GitHub Actions, we have this Azure Static Web Apps.yaml that was written by Microsoft, so they provide this for you. And this has basically two different actions that, are, that occur here. Now one happens when there is a push on the either the main repository or there is a pull request against the main repository. If it's a pull request, it creates a temporary testing site so that you can verify that your changes are good before you merge it into main. If it's merged into main, then instead of deploying that temporary site, it deploys the website to the production instance of the static web app. And then the second job in here is the close pull request. So when the pull request is merged or closed, it will destroy that temporary website, basically cleaning up after itself. Now, the main thing to note here is that there is a secret called Azure Static Web Apps API token. We need to configure that value. And we'll do that by going into the settings of our repository, going down to secrets and actions, and in here, I already have the secret because I was testing with it earlier, but if you don't, you just click on new repository secret. But because I redeployed everything, I have a new API token. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit that, and I need to give it the value that was part of my Terraform outputs. In the Terraform outputs, there's my API token. I'll go ahead and grab that, switch back here and paste it in, and click on update secret. Now. Because I have two-factor authentication enabled, I do have to punch in an authentication code from my phone in order to update this value. That's a nice little security feature that's baked in there. So let me go ahead and find my GitHub 2FA. There we go. And now it has successfully updated that secret to the current API token. That API token is how the GitHub Actions uh, finds the specific static web app in question and also authenticates to that static web app. So we have to update that secret in order for this whole process to work. Now, the last thing to do is to actually get our site deployed and we're going to do that by following a standard uh, git branch and merge process. The process for updating our site starts at the desktop. We're gonna create a new branch to make an update to our website. Now, if this is the first time you've ever deployed it, you can just push to main and that will kick off the GitHub action. But I've deployed it before, so I have to make a change to my configuration in a new branch. So we'll call this you know, demo deploy. 
So I'll create a new branch and then I'll go into the website directory under contents and posts and I'll change the first post to today's date, which is the 22nd. And since that is a change, I will go ahead and commit that change. We'll call it demo and publish this new branch up to GitHub. Now, once that has been published, the next step in the process is to create a pull request. So let's head over to the browser and it knows that I just pushed a new branch. So I'll go ahead and compare and pull request, add in a comment and create the pull request here. By creating a pull request, that will kick off the GitHub actions that will go out and deploy that temporary site so that I can validate that the site looks good before I deploy it to production. Now, this can take a few moments. If we want to view the details, we click on details and it will walk you through the steps that it's currently undertaking. Right now, it's building that new static website. Now, as I said, that can take a few minutes. So let's jump ahead to where that site has been successfully deployed. All right, the build job has completed successfully. And actually, I did cheat a little bit here. The first build failed because I had a stale reference to an old theme. So I removed that theme, did another push to this branch, and it successfully ran. So if we go look in the pull request now, as part of the workflow, it actually adds a comment to this whole uh, pull request with that temporary site. So we can click on that temporary site, and this is what will be deployed to the production site if everything looks good. So the very last thing we need to do is go ahead and merge the pull request and confirm the merge. And now this will fire off GitHub Actions again. And this time it's going to build the site on the production instance using our custom domain name. So again, this is gonna take a moment. I'll go ahead and delete the branch cause I don't need it anymore and go into my GitHub Actions. I should see there's my uh, two actions kicking off, one to clean up that temporary site and the other one to build out the current version of the site. I'll wait for that to finish and then we can go to the address itself, blog.10bitpodcast.com and verify that the site is up and running. All right, the job has completed successfully deploying our production instance of the site and cleaning up that temporary site. So we should be able to go to HTTPS Hey, it does SSL for you too as well. That's pretty cool. We'll go to blog.10bitpodcast.com. <laughs> and there's our site successfully published using the combination of GitHub Actions, Hugo, Azure Static Web Apps, and Terraform. Sweet, we did it. In this video, we saw how you can use the combination of Terraform, Azure Static Web Apps, GitHub Actions, and Hugo to deploy your own static website. And a couple key takeaways from this video are, number one, it's important to own your own content. No one else can take it away from you if you host it yourself, or at least host it on a platform that's highly portable. The next important thing is, while this might seem a slightly convoluted way to publish updates to your website, I think it hammers home some basic software development fundamentals, especially when it comes to source control. And that's always good to know. And the last thing is take advantage of the free tiers that are available wherever you decide to host your website. I hope this was useful and informative for you. If it was, let me know down in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. For now, it's Ned1313. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. So I had to highlight things, but I don't have a highlighter, but I have a yellow Sharpie and uh, don't sit in a closed room highlighting things with a yellow Sharpie. It's just, it's not a good idea. All right, bye.